Before the year 1999, no sci-fi story had ever depicted anyone quite like Bender. Futurama's 30% iron, 40% titanium, and 40% zinc automaton. Of course, Bender did a whole lot of really terrible stuff over the course of Futurama's many seasons and movies, but these have got to be some of the absolute worst. Relative to some of Bender's other crimes, stealing from people in need might not seem too bad. But it's hardly great either. The 1999 Futurama episode, Xmas Story, introduces the show's hilariously bleak take on Christmas's future. In the year 3000, Santa Claus is real, but he's a malfunctioning robot convinced that all humans are on the naughty list. So he spends Christmas Eve hunting down and killing any people foolish enough to leave their home. Santa has something very special in his sack for you too. The robots of New York City are exempt from Santa's attacks and can do what they want on Christmas, which for Bender means heading down to the local robot soup kitchen where homeless and down on their luck bots can get a free bowl of booze. Yeah, yeah, amen. Listen, I'm one of those lazy homeless bums I've been hearing about. Could you point me to the free booze? After taking what's essentially food out of the mouths of essentially starving robots, Bender convinces some other homeless robots to help him loot and rob from the city's other inhabitants. It's humans. Shall we mug them, robots, sir? No, wait. I know these guys. They got nothing. Merry Christmas from Bender, everyone. In a move that's heavily criticized by the show's women, the 2003 Futurama episode Bend Her finds Bender posing as a female robot in order to compete at the 3004 Earth Olympics and then undergo a surgical procedure to become a fembot permanently, so as to pull off a number of scams. Attending the Olympics as a spectator, Bender notices that the robot bending events are about to begin. Naturally, he decides he could have a go himself. Something tells me I could eat easily beat those trained professionals. But after seeing what the robots in his league are capable of, Bender becomes convinced that his late-breaking dream of Olympic glory has been dashed, until he gets the idea to game the competition by entering the female robot bending field. What do you mean I'm not registered? My name is Coilet, and I'm from, uh, Rabonia. Bender racks up a line of perfect scores and wins five gold medals for the Grand Duchy of Rabonia, but panics when he has to submit an engine oil check ensuring that no male robot winners cheated by posing as fembots. Oh God, I'm not gonna get my medals. They're all I have to remember my Olympic career. In order to keep his medals, Bender asks Professor Farnsworth to perform a gender-changing surgery on him. Bender goes through with it, passes the test, and Coilette then uses her newly acquired feminine wiles to seduce celebrity robot Calculon so as to scam him out of a number of expensive gifts and then marry him, so she can then divorce the guy and acquire half of his fortune. Yikes. Can a girl enjoy herself without being judged? Futurama's 2002 episode, A Pharaoh to Remember, is driven by how Bender always lashes out in hugely extravagant ways whenever he doesn't get the attention he thinks he deserves for his criminal acts. In this case, those crimes involve robbing a municipal pool and stenciling a graffiti tribute to himself. Luckily, Bender gets his chance to cement his legacy when, after the crew delivers a giant block to an ancient Egypt-like planet, he's taken by the planet's rulers as a slave. Call it a hunch, but I've got a bad feeling about this. Later, after the planet's cruel pharaoh is crushed, the wall of prophecy determines Bender to be the new leader, mostly thanks to Bender's crude tampering with the wall of prophecy. Long live Pharaoh Bender! Long live Pharaoh Bender! This society is a bunch of idiots. Bender quickly takes to his new role and cruelly forces an army of slaves to build a 284,000 mile high statue in his image. But then Bender fears the statue itself will overshadow him and orders the slaves to tear it down and build a newer, smaller one, which predictably leads to a rebellion. Ladies and gentlemen, the pharaoh suddenly died. After he's overthrown, Bender is thrown into a tomb and left for dead. Luckily for him, his last request is granted by his executioners and his best friends get entombed with him. What about my servants? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, right. 
It's not really much of a stretch to call Bender a narcissist. In fact, he nearly always acts in his own self-interest and isn't exactly averse to laughing at the misfortune of others. Bender, honey, we love you. Shut up, baby, I know it. And while he may always claim to want to kill all humans, Bender would probably rather just be worshipped instead. But that also means he really can't handle too much positive attention being paid to others either. And that's usually when he gets most violent. In the 1999 episode, I second that emotion. The Planet Express gang forces Bender to get an empathy chip installed following his ghastly treatment of Leela's cute pet Nibbler. Yeah, how dare you make me feel anger, you one-eyed jerk with a dead pet! <laughs> <laughs> After Leela leaves on the gigantic can opener she needs to get into a barrel of food for Nibbler, its powerful magnet sucks in Bender and tears him half to pieces. You kill my father and now you've come back for me! When Bender threatens to strangle the animal, Nibbler makes good on the robot's most iconic taunt. Bite my shiny metal ass! Hey, bite my shiny metal ass! Bite my shiny metal ass! Ow! My ass! Unfortunately, Nibbler chips his fang while doing so. A trip to the vet garners Nibbler some additional sympathy, which enrages Bender further, as does the birthday party the little guy gets when the veterinarian speculates Nibbler is five years old. Bender retaliates by making a Bender is great cake, which also goes kind of badly. <laughs> Of course, that's the last straw, so Bender flushes Nibbler down the toilet. Bender may have never achieved his desire to kill all humans, but in the 2003 episode Spanish Fry, he almost causes one to lose something pretty precious. During a Planet Express camping trip, Fry goes out hunting for Bigfoot and is subsequently abducted by aliens. Wow, nice tube! Hey, hey, what's the big idea? Stop abducting me! Why does your vanity plate say probe one? The next morning, he stumbles back to the campsite totally unharmed, except for the fact that his nose is completely gone. Ah, I think it's sweet. You chopped off your nose so you could look more like your hero, me, Bender. A news report soon reveals the real reason behind the area's recent uptick in alien abductions. Poachers are hunting humans and chopping off their noses or human horns to sell on distant worlds as aphrodisiacs. The gang soon tracks down Fry's nose, finding that it was purchased by recurring villain Lur, ruler of Omicron Percy I-8, who is looking to rekindle the spark in his marriage to Ndunda. And Dunder returns Fry's nose and Leela reattaches it with a laser and it seems like all's well that ends well until Bender opens his big mouth, that is. Yo, Highness, uh, just out of robo curiosity, why would you use a guy's nose for an aphrodisiac instead of his, you know... Wing dang doodle. Lur reveals that he thought the human nose was in fact the phallus, and Bender helpfully corrects him, which goes kind of badly for Fry. Guards, seize him! Ah! Prepare to harvest the lower horn. Fry is ultimately spared by Lur when Lur and Ndunda reconnect emotionally, but that doesn't change the fact that Bender came very, very close to getting his best friend's manhood chopped off. Then again. No, I'm gonna chop off my antenna. Hey, yeah, that sounds good. Can I give you a hand? While doctors are generally well compensated for their considerable expertise, Planet Express staff Dr. John Zoidberg isn't so lucky. He's a weird monster who smells like he eats garbage and does. Damn right! In the 2000 episode The Deep South, however, Zoidberg catches a lucky break. After a series of events caused the Planet Express ship and its crew to become stuck at the bottom of the ocean, Zoidberg goes out exploring and discovers a large, luxurious shell. He decides that this will be his new home and that he'll make a go of life under the sea. What's so far-fetched about mermaids? I mean, there's all sorts of weird sea creatures here in the future, like Dr. Zoidberg. Toward the end of the episode, with the ship in working order again, the crew prepares to leave. Zoidberg says goodbye, only to discover that his beautiful shell has burned down. How did this happen? That's a very good question. So that's where I left my cigar. That 
just raises further questions. Of all the people who need their house burning down the least, Zoidberg has to be top. So Bender destroying the lobster's new shell through outright carelessness seems like a major low point. After an unusually profitable period of business, Professor Farnsworth pays for some upgrades to the Planet Express ship in 2002's Love and Rocket, including the addition of a flirty female-voiced AI. If you don't like the stations, you could just play with my buttons till you find something we both enjoy. Bender quickly falls in love with the ship, she falls even harder for him, and then almost immediately Bender grows bored with the relationship and cheats on the ship with a series of what he calls cheap floozies on the side, as well as the preserved head of Lucy Liu. Who are you talking to? No one, baby. Lucy Liu is the only girl for Bender. I love you too. Naturally, the ship gets jealous and clingy as Bender lies about his affairs and remains aloof. Not only does Bender treat the AI poorly, but he unceremoniously dumps her and sends her into an emotional meltdown, right in the middle of an Omicronian fleet's attack on the delivery vessel and its crew. This sends the ship into both physical and emotional freefall. Bender, however, is no worse for wear. In 2011, Benderama nearly saw Bender fulfill his casual mission statement to kill all humans, but it actually went down completely by accident, merely the end result of an entirely different, deplorable action committed by the robot. In this episode, Professor Farnsworth invents a duplication machine which creates two perfect, although smaller, copies of an object. As Farnsworth grows ever older, he grows colder and smaller. So he uses the device to create two smaller sweaters he can wear simultaneously. The professor asks Bender to fold those new sweaters and the robot agrees, but not without a little whining first. Razor Frazzer two things. Ooh, Razor Frazzer duplicator. Hoping to get out of any more chores, Bender uses the duplicator to make two tiny benders and orders them to fold the sweaters. Obviously, they refuse and instead choose to join Bender in living his best life. When they are later asked to do another minor task, the little benders do just what they're bound to do and create clones of themselves to do it for them. Eventually, the clones keep duplicating and adding up, getting progressively smaller with each generation. Now, robots need alcohol for fuel and the many benders quickly consume the world's entire supply of alcohol. After this, the microscopic bender clones get to work converting water molecules into alcohol, which gets every living thing on Earth absolutely hammered. It all turns out okay in the end, but not without a little trouble first. Blender, you're the only one who's sober. <coughs> you gotta do something. Haven't I done enough already? Let's face it, Bender is no role model. Nobody should imitate the things he does. He's a selfish, callous, calculating madman who manipulates his friends and the world at large alike to serve his various destructive whims. But he's also hilarious and can likely be counted as the most memorable character on Futurama, a show chock full of memorable characters. But is there a danger in placing someone like Bender up on the pedestal that is television? Will people naturally imitate and emulate anyone they see on TV just because they find them funny? Well, that's the question behind the 2003 episode, Bender Should Not Be Allowed on TV. During this episode, Bender lands a role in his favourite robot soap opera, All My Circuits, and quickly becomes a breakout star by essentially playing himself, a singing, booze-guzzling, cigar-smoking petty thief. We need this edgy, sweeps-ready robot on our network. Bender, can you continue to drink, smoke, and steal things on TV? Yes, I can. The show surges in popularity, especially as more and more kids start to watch, transfixed by Bender's antics. In the wake of this, nearly all the show's recurring child characters end up trying to break stuff, abuse people, mouth off, and smoke, just like Bender. Much like Bender himself, however, Dwight Cubert and Tinny Tim soon find themselves angling for a bigger score. So they rob Bender, leading him to start a crusade to get himself off television. Although he'll probably tell you otherwise, Bender isn't actually great at everything. What? 
Take his cooking, for example. Bender dreams of becoming a renowned chef, but every time he tries to make a meal for the Planet Express crew, it goes horribly, horribly wrong. The pie is ready. You guys like swarms of things, right? Nevertheless, he persists, harboring a borderline obsession with the four-armed restaurateur and celebrity chef, Elzar. In the 2000 episode, Bender Gets Made, Bender, Fry, and Leela get to attend a taping of Elzar's TV cooking show. Bender is amped, but his enthusiasm quickly becomes obnoxious for everyone else. Bender, please try to be a little quieter. No, you shut up! While making down-home Neptune-style gumbo, Elzar decides to knock it up a notch with a blast from his spice weasel. Bender, of course, wants him to kick it up yet another notch, and Elzar reluctantly agrees. And then then this happens. I gotta get this notch up knocking on film. Hey Elza, think fast! Why the hell? Oh! My eye! Leela, of course, is then blinded for the rest of the episode. <laughs> oh wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.